Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Nate with Seven Run Aquatics and I'm coming at you today with an update video on the fish room as well as I thought I'd show you guys first my display aquarium that I have just outside the Epistogramma breeding room. Uh, so I'm just going to give a quick rundown of the tank and what I've got on it and stuff like that and then I will go ahead and go into the fish room. Uh, so in this tank, as far as stocking goes, we have a breeding pair of angelfish, which I got locally from a friend. Uh, we've also got four variatus platys, uh, three females, one male. We've got a about, I'd say, three, three and a half inch red tail shark in there. Uh, we've got a small school of Corydoras pandas. Uh, we've got about ten neon tetras, six bleeding heart tetras. And that's about it. And this is a 50 gallon tank. Uh, well, I'm as far as equipment that I'm running, um, I've got a Sun Sun on it. I think it's the one rated up to 70 gallons, so there's plenty of filtration. I've also got an Aqua Clear one, or excuse me, an Aqua Clear 3060 on it. Um, I did have a little DIY moving bed filter on it, but I decided to use that in the fish room to help cycle the tanks. Um, as far as plant life goes, I've got a bunch of Java fern growing off of my driftwood. Um, I've got a Crypt Windy growing front and center. I've got a whole heck of a lot of green Kambamba that I trim back pretty much at every water change. The stuff just grows super, super tall. Um, and a bunch of other assorted plants in there as well. I think there's some Staragani Repins, uh, some Crypt Malense, and maybe one or two other plants in there. Uh, there's also some Java Moss growing on some of the wood. You probably can't see that in the video. Um, I'm also running the uh, desk lamps on this with 6500K CFL bulbs. One of them's currently out right now, so I need to go ahead and get a new bulb to replace that. That's why there's a little dark spot uh, kind of to the left of the screen. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get that taken care of soon, and uh, most of the plants are still getting the light that they need. So everything's doing good in here. I really need to overhaul it. The silicone is kind of falling apart on it. And uh, I'm dreading it, taking all the fish out and all that stuff, but uh, it's going to kind of be a necessary evil uh, because I really don't want 50 gallons of water on my floor. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, guys, just thought it would be cool to show you my show tank, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the fish room. All right, everybody, we're in the fish room, and you're looking at the 15-gallon Epistogramma Cockatoides tank. Uh, there's my male if you can see him it's kind of dark uh the female is over in the coconut hut i actually had a disappointing day the other day because my longtime female that i had for like i don't know a year and a half up and passed away just really suddenly on me and so uh i had to get a new one and luckily my friend chance just over the pa line uh, had some females ready to go for me and actually I think this pair has already taken to each other pretty well because She's turned yellow. She was a dark gray black When I first got her in the tank and I think that's pretty normal since she was going from one set of water conditions to another uh, But she's turned yellow. She's a very young female and She's defending the coconut hut which kind of leads me to believe that they might have spawned and that mind you this is only like a two or three day period since they've been in the same tank together. Um, I did do some overhauling on the tank. I moved some driftwood around just ever so slightly. I added uh, some java moss for the fry to eat and fusoria off of, as well as to provide some cover for them and the adults. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as this tank goes. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this update. All right, and we're back, guys. So right now we're looking at the 10 gallon directly across from the Epistogramma Cockatoides biotope. Uh, as you can see, we've got fry in it, which is really exciting because they were in a breeding net before in the parent tank, and I really didn't feel comfortable with them in there. I didn't like it. Um, they didn't have enough room to grow. And now they're in this tank, which is great because it's got some sand, it's got leaves, it's got a little mat of java moss to provide some infusoria for them to feed on when I'm not feeding them their baby brine shrimp, micro worms, or uh, their, their crushed pellet foods. Um, so I'm just running sponge filters on here. I've got a DIY moving bed filter as well as a deep blue sponge filter. 
Um, this tank luckily cycled relatively quick because I used cycled filter media um, as well as I was squeezing out some cycled sponges in here to provide a little bit of ammonia as well as add some nitrifying bacteria. Uh, so they're all doing really well. Um, I'm glad you guys stuck around for this update on the fish room. Uh, there wasn't much building um, in this video. Actually, there was no building um, because I've still kind of got some details to work out as how I want to finish it. But uh, stick around and we'll definitely get to building next weekend. Uh, so with that said, I'm Nate with 7 Run Aquatics and I'd like to thank you guys for watching. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with your friends if you can. And uh, we'll see you later.